Have you been unleashed? Unleashed. 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 Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Horizon Advisors Unleashed podcast. This is Andrew Henricks, your host, back again with my friendly Rutgers alumni, partner Ryan Cuss. What's going on, Ryan? How's it get going? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. You're still uh, riding the high from their big football performance over the weekend? I mean, 2-0, and oh, baby. Yeah. The, um, Their running back is a beast. I mean, this kid is 165 yards first game, over 200. I think it was like 210, 220 the second game. Could be another Ray Rice situation. Remember what happened back then? Yeah, he was uh, – that's right. He did go to Rutgers, didn't he? Yeah. yeah, he was a beast. That was a long time ago. Oh, that was a, <laughs> that was really a long, long time, time ago. ago. Um, yeah, hopefully – Rutgers can come back to some of that. It hasn't been that way recently. They had a winning um, season last year, but I'll take it. Yeah, Big Ten's tough. Um, it's so tough. Now it's even tougher. Yeah, they got a lot of recruiting coming out of there. That's not always going to Rutgers. That's, I think, the biggest problem. A lot of the big boys are are, are taking the, the talent from there and coming over to the Midwest. But that's a podcast for another day. Another day. But football season is back. We're, uh, you know, we're at la- past Labor Day now, so... Summer is unfortunately kind of over. I mean, at least that's, I don't know if it's the official mark of summer being over or not, but in my eyes, that kind of is. I know we had a podcast on Labor Day and talking about all that. We're past that point now. We got some some of the cool air is coming through, um, and before we know it, it'll be Halloween and Thanksgiving, and we'll be in the thick of fall and, and back to the winter. So um, get ready for the cold. Yeah, It's coming. I just got a new jacket, so I'm prepared. Yeah, it's... um. It's always a fun time. Seasons changing. That's one thing I do like about Michigan is all of the seeing all the seasons and doing all that too. It's um uh, it's a lot of fun. Um but today we are gonna go back more towards the financial topics today. Um obviously we've we've done a few in the past. There's a lot of things going on right now with the election coming up and um the Fed, what they're gonna do with interest rates and inflation, all that stuff. And we've talked about a lot of that um in a couple recent podcasts, but we're going to kind of go back to, to planning today, uh, which, you know, you know, again, kind of full disclosure, we believe really everybody should have a plan, including ourselves. I mean, we're, um, you know, financial planners. That's what we do on a daily basis. But um, we still have plans for ourselves. We help each other with our own plans. You know, we, we still believe that everybody should have one. And that's why we kind of wanted to go back to the planning kind of subject matter, Um put a little twist on it today and kind of say, okay, well, maybe, maybe your plan hasn't been working. You know, maybe, um, you know, throughout all the stuff that we have spoke about, you know, you have stayed the course, you've done those things, right? It's not like you're making irrational, emotional decisions and trying to, you know, you know, you just started a plan three months ago and expect everything to be, you know, perfectly smooth sailing, everything like that. You're not in that category. Maybe you've, been working with someone or you've had a plan or you've been doing your own plan any of those things and you've been doing it for five six seven eight maybe a decade um and it doesn't seem to be working or it doesn't seem to be satisfying what you're trying to do or it's it's not hitting helping you hit the goals that you were wanting to hit um for whatever reason it could be a number of different things which we'll kind of we'll talk about today um but maybe your plan hasn't been working and maybe it's time for a new one, or maybe it is time to change routes or change gears and um, change strategies. Maybe maybe that is the case now because again, you've you have committed to something and you've seen time go by, and you've been doing maybe the, what you believe are the right things based on what the plan entailed or was discussed, and it's not working for you. And and maybe it's time for a switch, and um, and maybe time for a new plan altogether. Right. So how you kind of get there. Maybe maybe some of the indicators of maybe that it's not working, right? Some of those things, what what kind of to like look out for and kind of benchmark, I guess, to yourself on to 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 make that decision, um, and then what to do if it is time for a new plan or a new situation. So, um, you know, we kind of got this idea from, you know, again, we kind of take a lot from what we talk with clients on a daily basis, even friends and family too, um, things that aren't related necessarily to to business, but. 
you know, we've had these conversations a lot where uh, maybe someone came to us and what they've been doing for a while isn't working. Um, maybe they've been doing it themselves or again, maybe it's, it's a different type of strategy. They've been working with someone, but it's a completely different strategy and it hasn't been working and they come to us. Um, or even sometimes when they have initial goals or initial, um, things that they believe that they want and it is working with us and everything's been going great or fine, but now things have completely changed. Maybe it's a, uh, you know, a divorce or unfortunate death in the family or a change of jobs or a change of careers or all the things. And now, things have just changed and now that plan is no longer working for what your original intent was. And now we have to kind of pivot and, and change gears and it's time for a new plan. Um, so a lot of, a lot of those things are kind of, uh, you know, at the forefront today. Um, and I guess I kind of, I'll kind of throw a softball over to you, Ryan, and, and pass it over to you. I mean, if something's not working, let's say in a financial plan, I mean, let's just kind of start from the, the high level bare bones. I mean, where would you kind of start from looking at that from an, an analytical maybe or analysis point of view and what would you first look at to see whether or not something's working or not? Yeah, uh, I think the first step that I would take is, you know, just is there really a plan in place? You know, a lot of people walk through life, you know, they think they have a plan, they think they're doing things according to the plan, but it's not really detailed out. It's not looking deeply at all the different areas. So, you know, the first thing I would ask myself if I'm unhappy with my financial situation for whatever reason i'm not achieving my goals or my cash flow feels tight or i'm running up debt or all these number of things that might make someone feel uncomfortable you know the first thing i would look at is you know do i have a plan and is it really a plan is it someone is it something that i'm working to is it something i'm reviewing on a regular basis you know, I think that one is pretty easy to determine, you know, whether you have a plan or, or you don't. Um, so let's, let's just assume you do have a plan. You know, the very first thing I would look at personally, you know, are the goals. What are the goals of the plan? You know, are these goals attainable? You know, if you make a low income and you think you're going to save a lot of money, you know, that might not even be achievable. You might not even have enough cash flow to do, you know, what you're trying to achieve. You know, if you make 30000 you're trying to save 30000 you know, that goal is, you know, kind of unattainable. So, you know, the first thing I always like to do is, you know, look at what someone's trying to accomplish or what I'm trying to accomplish, you know, see what the goals are and see, you know, is what I'm doing today, you know, going to get me to hitting those goals. Yeah, that's definitely, I think, a great place to start, um, which is why a lot of a lot of planning at the end of the day, regardless of what the type of planning is, is really kind of start to see, okay, if everything worked out perfectly, which majority of the time it doesn't, but if it did, what is the outcome you want to have happen? That's with any, that's with any plan. Um, you know, you have to look towards, if you don't have at least an idea of what that looks like, or at least an idea of what you want to have happen, then the plan can can completely derail or, or not even be on the right track from the beginning because you don't really have an idea of what that looks like because then you're kind of just, you know, choosing a route or choosing an idea of maybe you think of where that's supposed to go, but because you don't know really where you're going, you might be lost along the way. Yeah, going right? about it willy-nilly. Yeah, or, or just, you know, uh, taking advice or, or taking something you saw online or on a TV show or a friend or whatever, and all those situations might be different and because you haven't really figured out what that goal is, you don't even really know if that strategy or whatever you're doing is the right way to go about it. And again, that can be used for any type of planning that we're talking about. Um, yeah, so let, me, I, let me give you an example. I just uh, you know, had a meeting with uh, one of our client's daughters. Uh, she had just graduated college, got her first full-time job. She's living in Chicago. She's trying to get her feet on the ground, doing the right things, you know, and she's like, Ryan, you know, I'm saving 12% in my 401k. I'm like, wow, that's fantastic. I was like, 12%, you know, that's, that's really good. That's very commendable that, you know, you're wanting to save at that rate. And then I, you know, started, you know, asking questions, you know, because one thing is, is she was contributing to her 401k, which is great, saving for, you know, retirement, but when you're in your young twenties, there's a lot of steps 
Mm. You know, before you get to retirement, you don't want to have all your eggs in one basket. So we talked about, you know, high level without creating a plan, you know, where is what's her cash flow look like? You know, what's her emergency funds look like? What are her, you know, short term goals? And then when we started having that conversation, you know, it wasn't about the amount she was saving is about where she was saving it. She was putting it all in the 401k. So just as a result, without even putting a plan together, but just as the infant first steps into her planning, you know, what we decided to do is, you know, first she was funding the traditional side, you know, which is pre-tax money. I said, look, you're making the lowest you're ever going to make. You should definitely be funding the Roth side. So we flipped her savings into Roth. And then what we did is we took her savings down, you know, from 12% down to the match. And she's like, really? You're telling me to save less than the retirement? I said, yeah, absolutely. We got to build up, you know, an emergency fund. We got to, you know, set these things up. And then when you get to that point, you know, we want to save in different buckets, you know, and we want to have some after-tax savings. So if you need to buy a house or get married or, all the million things you're going to want to do, you know, you're not having to take a loan or pull money out of a 401k and pay penalties. So, you know, just that was someone that just wanted to kind of start off doing the right thing and just had a goal of saving money and just the whole way, you know, that you're trained, hey, saving the 401k. And then when we just had, you know, brief conversation, we decided, you know, it makes a lot more sense to look at, you know, different avenues just to, mm-hmm. you know, give her more choices in life. Yeah. And sometimes, um, you know, to that kind of example, you know, sometimes like funding the 401k, I mean, saving the money is the hardest, hardest part and always commend the people that are doing that. Um, but sometimes, you know, in that situation, we'll hear things like, you know, they're saving money in the 401k. Oh, okay. Well, it's going to, it's going to keep growing tax deferred. And if I need the money, to, to buy a house or down payment of a house, you know, I'll just take a 401k loan or I'll, I'll do something like that. So I don't get penalized. You know, that was my strategy. And that, that, that could be good to an extent, but you know, sometimes they don't even realize that, you know, the full amount max you could take as a loan is 50,000. Yeah. Um, people think you can loan out the whole balance. You no. Know, and, and then sometimes it's, there's specific rules. You know, if it's under a certain amount, you can't take the full amount. You can only take the lesser of half or 50, you know, all those different rules. Um, you know, and that's the only thing that would be available for you unless you did take an early distribution and, and pay penalty and other things. So, and then they're like, well, you know, how much are you actually wanting to put on the down payment? Are you wanting to pay all cash? What's the strategy? Oh, I want to put a hundred grand down. Well, okay. If you know, if you keep funding the 401k, that's great, but just know that 50,000, if you get to that point is the most you'll be able to take as a loan and you're going to have to take the other 50 or from somewhere else. You know, and then it's like, oh, okay, well, then should you be saving in different areas? And and that's where, again, kind of the route, you know, sometimes you're on the right track, but, you know, you're at a, you know, a point where you got to switch tracks to go to a different area and you got to be able to, you know, look at, again, what the goal is to determine what the best route to get there. And you have to be disciplined to make those changes because sometimes if you don't have the money going into a 401k or going into a plan and kind of seeing that money just go away from your paycheck and it goes into the bank, you know, some people just unfortunately aren't disciplined enough to know that that cash needs to be earmarked because that was kind of money that you were saving that was su- it's supposed to be saved for a purpose, but now it's liquid in your bank and some people, you know, they'll see those bigger balances now in your cash position and they maybe feel they can spend more or do th- or you know, go do more fun things or whatever. And then that kind of, again, derails the goal. So that's where like sometimes I go back to, you know, kind of the question of where you start is, Yes, of course, identifying the goals and then looking at, you know, what has happened to maybe if it's not working, what has happened to not get it there. And a lot of the time it does have to do with cash flow. You know, they didn't save an, uh, enough this year or as much as they wanted or or some of those things happen. And then we look at really what happened. Oh, well, you know, we went on two vacations this year or, you the know, furnace we, broke. This yeah, happened, things and things happened. happen and those things happen. But sometimes it's not necessarily that the plan isn't working. It's just because one of those little levers we just talked about was pulled and, you know, now, now it's just, it changed the situation. You know, maybe it's a medical emergency, a thing like a furnace or an AC or whatever, you know, and you had to shell out five, 10 grand and that 10 grand was supposed to be earmarked for whatever it was. And now you're in that situation and things just might have to change. You're like, okay, well, if you, if you want to really save that extra 10 grand now, you know, unfortunately that situation happened, life happens. So now we got to think about other areas that if you really want to save that money, can you sacrifice here or, or change this to get there? And ultimately it's always your decision. 
it's your money, it's your life. You know, we're never going to make that decision for you, but you know, you're going to have to be willing to, if things change in your life, you'll have to be willing and wanting to make adjustments to make that happen. Yeah. And I'd say, you know, going back to the example I gave, that was one of the things, you know, we had a big talk about was, you know, the discipline, let's lower this out. Now, if you lower your savings and you just go blow this while you're hanging out in Chicago, then we're, I'm hurting you with this advice. Mm -hmm. Uh, She also had a little bit of student debt, you know, like, I think it was like 20 grand, something like that. Not a, not a huge chunk, but it was all at, you know, seven, 8%, you know, so, so one of the things I was saying, well, Hey, saving for the future is great, but if we're paying seven, 8% on this debt, I mean, I think we definitely, you know, should try to take care of that first, you know, before, you know, get a good foundation before you're going to start trying to build something. So you know, what we decided to do is, you know, divert part of what she was saving to just pay down student loans faster. And then the other part, I had her open up a high yield savings account and she just has an auto saving to build up the emergency fund. She's going to seed the high, high yield with some of the cash she had. And then she's going to just automatic transfer money from her bank account into that on a monthly basis and just treat it as a bill. Yeah, and you know, sometimes, um, and a lot of the time, and this even goes for people who are about to retire. Sometimes, oh, I'm retired, I don't have the time. Everybody has time, right? It, it really is the truth. It's just talking about time horizon, of course, is different for everybody and what we're trying to do. But everybody has time, and it's just finding that right time. You know, for younger people, like this example... You know, sometimes it's taking a deep breath and realizing that you do have time. You don't have to go all full throttle right away. Sometimes taking a step back and doing some of these other things first is what's going to help you throttle it up later and propel later. Just as much as the flip side is maybe you're in nearing retirement or close to retirement. And, you know, unless you're only planning to have a retirement of five years, which hopefully is not the case, you know, then sometimes we do need to look at the situation and say, hey, this we might need to, you know, take some more exposure long term. We might need to change the strategy a bit to really hit what you're trying to accomplish because, you know, putting everything into cash and conservative monies based on what you're trying to accomplish, that that might actually not work in that sense, um, you know, based on rate of return assumptions and expectations and other things. So it goes to both points, and there's obviously there's a middle there too, but, you know, time is, you know, a factor a very big factor. And sometimes it's not uh, easy to realize, oh, you know, I have a lot of time. Let's make some decisions now that are going to help later more than right now. It might feel some pain now, but you have to have that mindset to realize it's going to help later. And that still goes for people who are about to retire. Um, Because again, we're hoping if you retire at full retirement age or a little bit before, whenever you do, we're, we're hoping you got 20, 30, you know, 35 years, hopefully of, of retirement. I mean, that's a long time, right? So yeah, th- you- I think a lot of people struggle with the long-term goals. They might have an idea of what they, you know, in, you know, they want to live a good life. That's, I think if most people can be comfortable and live a good life, that's like what their goal is. But how do you get there? What does that mean to you? You know, cause I've seen a lot of people do it a lot of different ways. And I've seen people that do it very simply that are very, very happy. And then I see people that, you know, have a lot of expenses, have a lot of income and, you know, they aren't happy. Mm -hmm. Um, So, so I think, you know, figuring out what's right for you, setting up goals, making sure they're realistic and not just focusing on the long term, focusing on, you know, the whole entire plan and being realistic with yourself. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, going back to that initial question of where to start, I think the goals is definitely a big, a big place to start. And then, you know, once you get there, right, going back, okay, we're talking about a plan, maybe it's derailed or it's not working, and what do you do? And maybe that's going back to the new plan. The second thing I would kind of look at is, again, what you have to look at in a plan if it's not working or you think it's not working for you anymore. After you get to the goals, you have to look at the assumptions that you have built in. Assumptions are, yes, how much you've been saving, what your income is looking like, um, rate of return on investments or whatever money you're you know, funding into certain places, right? What, what that has achieved. And you have to look at your assumptions and say, okay, are these realistic? 
right? Assumptions are assumptions at the end of the day. You, when you're looking out in the future and planning, you can only do so much today until you're, you know, in the situation and actually seeing it. But I'm talking, you know, going back to the people who have now looked at a plan or have had or thought they had a plan or have a plan for five, six, seven, eight years now. So you've given it some time and then you look at it now and you're, it's not hitting or it's not working. That's when you have to go back to the assumptions and say, okay, what did we have for these factors? You know, inflation, rate of return, savings amount, income, expenses, right? You have to look at those and say, okay, were these actually accurate? Did were I, we factoring in all these? Yeah, we're, yeah, were we factoring everything? Did we actually give either the planner or myself, if that's, you know, if you're the planner, did I give myself all the actual facts of what was going on or did I leave something out? Did I forget something that could make an impact, Right. You know, again, some things could be assuming a too high rate of return of when what has happened. Some of it could be sh uh, showing too little of expenses. Maybe you weren't honest with yourself and you thought you were going to be 30000 a year positive cash flow. But in reality, you were only ten because you had 20000 extra of expenses at every year that you didn't really think was happening. But maybe it is. It adds up over time. So you have to look back at those assumptions and say, OK, were these actually fair? You know, they're not going to be dead on. That's what assumptions are. They're never going to be exactly accurate, but you have to look to see if they were fair. I even like to take a step further. I don't even like to say, is it fair? I like to be conservative. I think we all like to be conservative sure. in our planning because, you know, I think if you're looking at things, not in a worst case scenario, but if you're looking at it conservatively, you know, that's an easy kind of benchmark to hit overall. You know, and then if you perform better than that benchmark, then, you know, life is great. You know, everything's great. You have extra, you know, you don't have stress. But if you're being too aggressive, you know, with what you think you're going to have happen, you know, I think that's where, you know, people run into problems. Yeah. And some of that aggressive nature, for an example, would be, again, assuming too high of a rate of return every year, not assuming market fluctuations because it doesn't always go up. It goes up and down. You know, that's one. Some of it sometimes is too low of expenses. Again, you're not being honest with yourself on what your expenses actually truly are. And you're just kind of trying to paint a picture to make yourself feel good or look good when in reality your expenses are higher, right? The things you like to do, your hobbies, your fun stuff, right? Normally the fixed expenses, the rent, the mortgage, the car payment, things like that, those are pretty accurate because you know exactly what those are. But it's usually the variable ones where sometimes people can go a little too on the low end and it ends up being higher. And that does affect a plan pretty drastically over or, time. Or you bank on, you know, getting a bonus or you're banking on things that, you know, mm -hmm. you can't control and you're banking on that happening. And then when it doesn't, you have a shortfall. And yep. then, you know, how do you make that shortfall up? Yeah. Income growth is another big one, right? You know, assuming you're going to, you know, Oh, I'm going to get a raise. I'm going to get a promotion or I'm going to get this new job. And, you know, then again, you're you're running the plan based on those numbers, and maybe that's not realistic. Maybe it's going to take longer to get those to reach those income goals. Maybe it's going to take longer to get that promotion or that next job, um, or or whatever it might be. Or you think, uh, you know, you've invested in a business or you ran a business, and you think you're going to be profitable here at this rate, and it doesn't work out that way um, over that span of time. All those things could make a plan derail, and this is all before you know, things actually looking at the plan and saying, blaming something else first, you got to first look at, again, the information, the data and the assumptions you provided or that you agreed upon when you're doing this planning to make sure that, okay, is the plan really off track? Because maybe after looking at all that stuff, it might not be, a, uh, you know, make you happy. It might not be um, a good thing, but it might actually be the plan is actually working. It's just your expectation, your assumptions were wrong based on the data you provided. You know, that could be a reality for you. Yeah, I think I think that's a good time to segue into like a next point. I've kind of heard you bring it up, uh, I think, two or three times already. Um, you know, being true to yourself. I think this is probably one of the big points, you know, that I see – for people that are struggling, I guess, you know, if, if you have a plan that's working great, you probably don't have issues with this. But, you know, if you're not happy with how your plan's going, your financial situation's going, you know, normally, 
you know, a big part of that is, you know, being truthful for with yourself. Uh, you know, one of the big things that I see, you know, that, you know, people kind of look at is the difference between needs and wants. You know, so there's always levers, you know, if you need to reduce spending, if you need to put yourself in a better position, there's always things that you can do for the most part. I mean, there are people that are just in bad situations and mm -hmm. they're going to just be stuck. But, you know, ultimately most people have options. You know, you could get a second job, you could do this, you could do that. You know, I think the toughest thing is, you know, owning up to that and then putting putting the work behind and being honest about it. If, if you want to do something and you can't, you know, with your current situation, what is it that's going to change? Are you going to stop spending money on things that you really enjoy doing so that you can get ahead in life? Are you going to go get that second job, you know, maybe for a year or two and say, Hey, every dollar I make from this is going to be dedicated for this. I'm going to put extra work in because my desire is so strong. I want to make this happen. I'm willing to do anything to make this happen. Mm. I think, you know, being truthful for yourself, a lot of people really fail at being truthful with themselves and they will cover things up. They'll pretend everything's okay. But in reality, you know, they're killing themselves in their mind daily with their worries and, you know, mm. and, and not being satisfied with their financial life. Yeah. I think, and I think to that point too, it's also, again, same kind of point, but action is like the word I'm thinking of is you, people that might expect, you know, they, they create this picture and maybe they've done all the things we've just said correctly, but then assuming it's just going to happen. That's another assumption that, you know, could be misunderstood or misconceived when you're planning just assuming things are just going to happen if you just oh i put this plan together oh this all looks great it's just going to happen without any action that's not true right you yourself as an individual have to cause that action you either have to physically save the money or stop spending the money or go make that more income or you know if you're investing the money you got to actually manage the portfolio to achieve the rate of return that you're trying to achieve like all those things actually have to happen so it's, it's work it's work it is and so it's yeah it's being true to yourself and all that is 100 percent true but it's also action right so it could also be you did all the right things but then you've kind of procrastinated or you've gotten a little complacent on monitoring the plan or meeting with your advisor or whatever it might be and then you just you just expect that everything is going exactly how you said it was a year two three years ago well, most likely that's probably not going to be the case because there was probably action items or things that needed to be adjusted or changed over that time and you didn't do them or you didn't have the conversation or you didn't, you weren't true to yourself and didn't make those changes. Uh, so, you I know, I call that walk it like you talk it. Mm. Yeah. That's a good way to put it's it. Good lyric. Right yeah. There. Walk it like you talk it. It's true. Walk it like you talk it. Walk you, it like you talk You do it. have to walk the talk. You have to, because again, talk is, you know, I'll talk again. And we say this sometimes in our meetings too, is, you know, when we're looking at all the plan, looking at all the assumptions, we go through everything in detail and explain it all. You know, a lot of the time what we say is, hey, listen, all of this stuff is great. If, if we're all on the same page with everything we just talked about, you know, cash flow, assumptions, goals, blah, 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 all that stuff. If we're all on the same page, you know, this is all great. This would be the outcome if those things happened and you're happy with that outcome. That's all great. But those are just numbers. Those are just numbers. Again, we're looking out in the future. It's a roadmap. And actions still need to happen to get it there. You know, it doesn't just, oh, okay, yeah, all these are great. You know, I'm all on the same page with all these things we stated. It doesn't mean it's just going to happen for you, right? That That's not how it works. You still have to monitor. You have to implement. You have to do action. You have to cause things to happen. Um, you know, all those things are important in a plan as well because it's not static. It's always changing. And things in life are always changing. So that's why you have to always go back and revisit things too and make sure that all the things we stated are still accurate and that they're working towards the goal. And, you know, I guess that would kind of lead to the final point, which is let's say everything we just said, you are doing those things, right? You are holding yourself accountable. You are being fully accurate and, and true to the best of your ability of all the income, the expenses, blah, blah, blah. The assumptions are conservative. You're not getting too aggressive. Maybe you've even outperformed your assumptions, right? 
and all those things are happening, but the plan still isn't working for some reason. That might be a situation where, you know, again, you need to really, really double check to see if you're being true to yourself. If you say that's the case, then maybe that's time where you need a new plan and you need a second opinion, right? Maybe it's you doing it yourself or you've done something for a long time and this is the way you've always done it. But now for some reason, maybe it worked for five, 10 years, but now you're in year 15 and things have changed. Whatever it could be. You're not accounting for certain things. Yeah, it could be a lot of things, but it's just things have changed and it's no longer working. So again, you did all the right things, but now things have changed. That might be the time where, yeah, it's time for a new plan. It's time to get maybe a second opinion, someone to double check yourself. If you're the one that's been doing the plan and implementing things, maybe having a professional, again, give you a second opinion on what maybe they think has gone wrong if you feel something hasn't worked out the way it has or what are the things that have gone right and maybe focusing on those things more. Um, Sometimes that second opinion and that professional advice can open your eyes to other things that maybe you're not thinking about. Maybe there's emotional ties to things that you don't always see, but they're, they're, you know, they're internal um, and that there are, there are biases and other things that are affecting certain aspects of your plan. And, you know, when you have a third party, a professional, you know, give a second opinion and give their advice that's strictly on rationale and not emotion, you know, that could maybe uncover some of the problems or maybe some of the things that you can't find or can't seem to, to implement correctly. Yeah, let me uh, take that a, just a little step further. I mean, a lot of people, you know, out there go hire a financial advisor, you know, to help them manage their investments. And, you know, they feel like, hey, I, I'm working hard, I'm saving, I got this financial advisor that's telling me, you know, I'm doing all the right things, you know, but they don't even have a financial plan with you. There's a huge difference between working with a financial advisor and a financial planner. If you don't have a goal-based financial plan that's, you know, built based on your wants and needs and your exact financial situation, it, it, it's going to make it trickier to hit your goals. I mean, really all that person's doing is, you know, helping you invest the money. Hopefully they're doing that well and they're getting you a good rate of return, but you might be getting the best investment returns possible. But if you're not saving enough or you're, you're investing in ways that you're paying extra taxes that Mm. you shouldn't be, you know, there's a lot of different things that could be hurting you that, that you don't know. So I think, Again, going back to the second opinion is, you know, first of all, who am I working with or am I doing it myself? And second of all, you know, how comprehensive has the process been? You know, when I'm going into a meeting, are they just showing me talking about the economy and showing me investment results? Or are they, you know, diving deep into what's going in on my life, what's going in on the short term, medium term, long term? having a conversation about cash flow, what's going on with the job, income, you know, looking at all those different factors, that's going to help bring a lot more clarity and it's going to help you, you know, get a plan that's going to help you hit your goals a lot, a lot better. Yeah. And that can also, again, shed some light on going back to the initial question of whether it's working or not, you know, you might think it's not working, but it might be working or vice versa. It might, you might think it's working, And it's not working, actually, because if you do have that second opinion or you're actually monitoring it and sitting down and reviewing a plan, that's where you can really kind of benchmark to see if the plan is working. If it's just investment management and that's it, again, maybe that person or if it's you just doing that, maybe it is doing a great job and it is doing well, but it might not be satisfying the actual goals of your situation, which again, like Ryan mentioned one, like maybe it's lowering taxes or or not having big tax exposure. Maybe it's, you know, saving more money and you need to save more to hit those goals, regardless of the rate of return that it's getting, you might not be able to get to where you want to go because you're not saving enough, right? Those are more planning type of questions and techniques and strategies that it doesn't matter necessarily what the investments are doing. If, if those other things aren't getting talked about or monitored, then it, it still might not be getting you to the goal, regardless of the rate of return. Yeah, I mean, another example that I just had a client in recently, and, you know, she was fortunate enough. She lives a very conservative lifestyle, made good money, saved good money, 
And uh, one of her main goals was retiring uh, sooner than later. So when we first started meeting, she wanted to retire like 59, 60. And then over time, as she got more confident with the plan, I showed her like, look, you're, you know, by the time you're on social security, you're going to be able to live just right off your social security income. You, that's how little you spend. Like all we're really, you know, looking at from a retirement standpoint is the next, you know, bunch of years. You know, I actually ended up, you know, getting her to move that retirement date up till 55. And, you know, one of the big reasons we were able to do that is, again, she had different types of money. She had Roth money. She had after-tax money. She had been with her employer long enough that we could leave some money in her 401k, you know, so that when she retired at 55, we could access the money out of the 401k, you know, without getting a 10% penalty pre-59 and a half. And then because she had these different buckets of money, Roth, you know, after-tax, traditional, we were able to keep her income, you know, pretty low so that her health insurance costs were super low, you know, compared to, you know, she's paying 300 a month compared to maybe having to pay $1,000 a month, you know, so it's, you know, it's looking at what you're trying to accomplish and making sure you might be saving the right amount of money, you might be invested the right way, you know, but you might be just doing it in the wrong type of accounts that makes a huge difference to, you know, your flexibility down the road. Yeah. Options, having options is, is always, I think a good, you know, a good thing to have, right? I mean, at the end of the day, any decision that you make, no one, no one really likes to be confined to one option. If you got to that point, it's probably not necessarily a good situation. If there's only one app, it just is what it is. It is what it is. You have to either, you know, kind of suck it up and go with that or you don't. And that's the only, those are the only options you have. But if you have, multiple options you probably did either a pretty good job planning whatever that decision was to get to that point where you have alternative routes or options to go with and you get to decide which one you want to do that's normally always a better situation than just having one option you know so again an example like that in a plan is you might have been doing all the right things like like ryan just stated and saving the right amount of money getting a good rate of return all of those things might have been accurate but you might have never really even considered diversifying the types of monies and you saved all of that money into traditional and who knows, maybe your tax bracket's still high in retirement. So yeah, you got a deduction up front getting it in, but maybe you're not really getting a tax savings later because all that money is going to come out and you got to pay tax again and you're still in a high tax bracket. Maybe because the amount you're pulling out is going to automatically put you in a high tax bracket regardless. Right. So those are some of the things, even though you saved 10 percent your whole life and you built up a huge portfolio, if it's all traditional, again, that's great. But you've limited yourself to only one option. We know it's traditional and that's the case. Yes, maybe you can do Roth conversions or do some other type of strategies to try to get some of that money out, you know, in a tax efficient way for the future. But the bottom line is, is that's the option. We know we're pulling money out. We're paying taxes. That's the thing. You know, so that's where those options come into play. And those ideas really only come about, again, if you go back to the plan, see if it's working, you might have already got to that point where now you're like, oh, well, I'm always going to be in a high tax break because all my money's traditional. That could have been something that may have, if you were monitoring your plan, got a second opinion and realized that something wasn't working for you, maybe 10, 15 years prior, you decided to diversify the savings and built up different buckets. And then now in retirement, you do have options. Yeah, it's hard to do right at the end if you're like, mm -hmm. oh, crap, man, I wish I would have done that. Well, I got four years till I'm retired. I'll just try to do as much as I can of that. I mean, it's only so maybe, much it, you can maybe do. it moves the needle a little, but, you know, mm -hmm. more, more times than not. You know, it doesn't really move the needle. And, at, and normally at, at the end of the day, all of these things is just really about being proactive and truthful. I think those are really just the two biggest things. Proactiveness of actually monitoring, having a plan, monitoring it, whether it's with a professional or yourself, you're actually monitoring it, making decisions, Care. you know, giving updates, that stuff. And then again, the second part of the truthfulness is everything that's in the plan, you got to be giving yourself or the planner accurate information, truthful information, or else you're really just doing yourself a disservice because that, excuse me, everything you see will just not really be realistic. It might just be a pipe dream. Might you make know? you feel good. Yeah, but that doesn't always give you the best result, making yourself feel good. Uh, I think everyone can attest to that. 
which again goes back to why we plan conservatively and we do all those things, not because those are targets. We're not trying to get low rates of return, all those things. Of course, you know, we're trying to achieve and do those things too. But if the plan works in a conservative way, that gives you some of that wiggle room where maybe those one-off things happen. The furnace, the thing right, we talked about earlier, it gives you that wiggle room. Okay, well, yeah, that happened, but it didn't really affect the plan because I assumed lower income than I actually made. I assumed lower or lower expenses, you know, or ex- rate of return, exact or higher expenses. I mean, excuse me, I assumed higher expenses and they were actually lower. So that that thing that happened really just made up what we assumed in the plan anyway, and it still worked great, right? Yeah, rate of return, another one, you know. So those are the kind of things you have to be truthful about. But again, I you know to to really answer the question head on in closing, if all of the things we just talked about you are doing accurately and you believe you're doing to the best of your ability, it's then taking it to the next step and say, okay, maybe it's time for a new plan. Maybe it's time for a second opinion. And what that step look like is going to be important, which it might be second, second opinion on yourself, your own plan that you've implemented, a second opinion on someone else's plan that they put together for you or a combination of both. Maybe you've never had a plan. Maybe you've just been doing the savings your whole life and you never really had a plan at all. You didn't work with someone or had one yourself. And maybe it's time that you do need one. And being honest with yourself with that, I think that's really going to shed some light on whether or not your plan is working or not and whether or not you need a new one. Thanks again for listening. We'll see you again soon. Cheers. Ryan Cuss, President and Financial Planner. Alexander Dinzer, Managing Director and Financial Planner. Andrew Henricks, Financial Planner. Securities and advisory services offered through Satera Advisor Networks, LLC, member FINRA slash SIPC, a broker-dealer and registered investment advisor. Satera is under separate ownership from any other named entity. Tax planning services offered by Horizon Advisors. Tax and accounting services provided by Horizon Advisors CPA. Satera Advisor Networks does not provide tax nor accounting services. For a comprehensive review of your personal situation, always consult with a tax or legal advisor. Neither Satera Advisor Networks LLC nor any of its representatives may give legal or tax advice. The views stated in this podcast are not necessarily the opinion of Satera Advisor Networks LLC and should not be construed directly or indirectly as an offer to buy or sell any securities. Due to volatility within the markets, opinions are subject to change without notice. Information is based on sources believed to be reliable. However, their accuracy or completeness cannot be guaranteed. Past performance does not guarantee future results. Investors cannot invest directly in indexes. The performance of any index is not indicative of the performance of any investment and does not take into account the effects of inflation and the fees and expenses associated with investing. A diversified portfolio does not assure a profit or protect against loss in a declining market. All investing involves risk, including the possible loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment strategy will be successful. Distributions from traditional IRAs and employer-sponsored retirement plans are taxed as ordinary income and, if taken prior to reaching age 59 and a half, may be subject to an additional 10% IRS tax penalty. Converting from a traditional IRA to a Roth IRA is a taxable event. A Roth IRA offers tax-free withdrawals on taxable contributions. To qualify for the tax-free and penalty-free withdrawal of earnings, a Roth IRA must be in place for at least five tax years, and the distribution must take place after age 59 and a half or due to death, disability, or a first-time home purchase, up to a $10,000 lifetime maximum. Depending on state law, Roth IRA distributions may be subject to state taxes. Investing in mutual funds is subject to risk and loss of principal. There is no assurance or certainty that any investment strategy will be successful in meeting its objectives. Exchange-traded fund and mutual funds are sold by prospectus only. Investors should consider the investment objectives, risks, and charges and expenses of the mutual fund or ETF carefully before investing. The prospectus contains this and other information about the product. Contact Alexander Dinzer at 5455 Corporate Drive, Suite 306, Troy, Michigan, 48098 or 248 
265-6662 to obtain a prospectus, which should be read carefully before investing or sending money. Horizon Advisors, 5455 Corporate Drive, Suite 306, Michigan, 48098.